Welcome back to the Manor Entropians. Julian McBain here. And we are back with Halloween Mayhem. And we are at, we have 8 hours and 29 seconds remaining. Or 29 minutes, wow. 8 hours and 29 minutes remaining. Which puts us on hour 7 and a half. Because I was, uh, I was hunting yesterday and I got halfway through and then, like, it lagged out so bad that I couldn't fight. I went from full health to no health on a single mob and I hit the mob three times. Not, I just wasn't swinging. So, we're going to give this a try again. Um, I am actually going to, I usually don't, but I'm going to try this, uh, do the loot pill thing. Ooh. Oh shit, I forgot to put those away. Oh well. Three point six. I already have it recorded somewhere so I can make sure I can keep you know how I am about um recording absolutely everything. So here we go. We are seven and a half hours in, we have two thousand four hundred two points. Not terrible. Not as high as I'd like to be, but not terrible. Let's see what the uh, current scoreboard looks like. Looks like Lord is still on top. Someone, someone named their character Superfly. That's kind of awesome. Uh, Robert. Nicholas. So... So if, if we were to stop here, we would wind up in 34th. We'd we'd bump Wasp. I don't expect I don't accept that as a final score. Let's see what we can do. Getting all kinds of those by the end of the night last night. Really frustrating. Come on. Overall, this mayhem has been has been really enjoyable. Um, been having a super time. It's nice to be able to just relax and do just just a lot of constant hunting. I mean, I've not been doing a lot in Entropia lately. I've been kind of giving it a rest and. You know, doing doing other things. You know, I'm I'm in Fallout 76 now, although I'm not very far. Um, I've been working on Borderlands, and I've been playing other for one for uh, single player games. Journey will be coming up here pretty quick. Uh, next week, I think. So, overall, it's been pretty good. No complaints. Sometimes you just got to play Entropia, and Mayhem is the perfect opportunity just to jump back in and do some consistent hunting. Although I have to admit, fighting these Annihilation Zombies kind of make me want to go back up to the Warlord section and fight him again. Just like, hunt Mathoids for fun. Oh, and I went to the auction house and nobody had LB30s. So when the LB30 runs out, we have an LB35. I do want to go through this at my current level. So I'm at 100% for levels for uh, damage and hit. It's got a 64.4 efficiency. I won't be able to see what the source core efficiency is because I've got something attached to it. And I think, I, yeah, I got rid of all of the extras. Um... Same number of swings per minute. I'm only able to do 35. This is where it really starts to kick up, though. Like, currently, I can only do 27 to 53, but 45 to 90 at max use ability. That's huge. And I'm gonna, I would, I would end up span because I'm in the, um, the learning period. I would span that gap rather quickly. Now, it does burn more ammo than the 30. I mean, like all of them. 
I could go back down to the 10 and be super ammo efficient. But that's not going to level me nearly as fast. And because of the way I see the loot table, I think it's just a matter of how often you cycle your ammo. I think there is an M token 35 out there too. I've got to check the um, token trader. I have to get far more tokens than I have though. I don't, I don't even think they're tradable. Nope. Oh, that would be useful. Let's take that pill. Ooh. Why not? Let's dope ourselves up on all kinds of mind arc drugs. It's a good thing I'm not monetized. That would just get me deranked and hard. That would be hard demonetization right there. I don't know if y'all are catching Lore Spade's streams, but they're really good. Unfortunately, the time period in which he plays is not advantageous to me watching the whole thing. I mean, besides the fact that it's five hours long, um, which is not a complaint. Unfortunately, it's right in the middle of the day, so like I catch the beginning of it on my lunch hour, and then when I take breaks, I can sneak in a couple minutes, but... It's been really good, so if... Once you're done watching this, I'd go over and see Lorspate's channel and check out the uh, the recordings of his streams. They're fun stuff. But, so... This kind of leads me into something that I was discussing. So I, I did a McBain Moments this morning. This will post on Wednesday, but it's being recorded Tuesday night. I did a McBain Moment this morning that really kind of focused on... Um, oh shit, what did it focus on? It's been a week, I'm telling you, man. Like my brain just fused there for a second. Oh, the seed of triumph can be found in adversity. And you got to be willing to face I'm gonna take off my vest. You got to be willing to face adversity. You got to be willing to deal with just all of the the things that'll come up. And be ready to contend with them and overcome them. We who play Entropia play almost the perfect simulation of what it's like to be in real life. If real life involved shooting monsters. Yes, I know, real life would be so much more fun if we could if you know, all it was was us shooting mobs all day long. But think about it. You don't get what you don't earn. Nothing's handed to you. You go in, you work hard, and if you work hard, you succeed. You get the skills, you get the loot, the loot turns into money. You can invest. Oh, shit. Cool. 
Didn't realize I hadn't added that. I had, uh, I had an empty skill chip. And someone bought it off of me because I, I really have no use for it, but I didn't want to sell it because I knew that they could go for good markup. And, uh, sold it to another player. But you don't get what you don't earn. And that's the way real life works. And we put all kinds of effort into this game. This isn't me whining. This isn't me bitching. This is me just... I'm, I'm getting real with you. Because you got to get your money right. You got to get your effort right. You know. All of us have the ability to accomplish whatever it is we are really passionate about. Whatever it is we set out to accomplish and want, we have to actually want it. We can't just say, yeah, I'd really like that. You have to be, you have to have a burning desire to have or achieve what it is you aim for. Without that, you've got nothing. You'll never succeed without that. And there's nothing wrong with not wanting anything at this point in time. At some point, you will. And if you wanted something at some point in your life and you gave up on it, revisit that. Why did you give up on it? Is it something you still want? If it's something you still want, get up and start moving toward it. Figure out what it is you need to do. Come up with some sort of framework of a plan. And I don't care if you're ready for it or not. Go out and start doing the things you need to do to make that activity, that to do the activities to make that plan work. You know, the way the world works is changing. It used to be, you know, you could used to be able to buy four candy bars for a dollar and a gallon of gas was 79 cents. I remember these things. They're not like that anymore, folks. And it'll never be like that again. You have to be able to contend with the way the world works. And you have to be willing to bear the struggle and the pain that comes with contending with the world. And so I would challenge you to take your time, to take the time. And I'm 93 pack, really, dude? Yikes. Um, I would challenge you to look at yourself and decide what is it that makes me feel like the real me? What would be my perfect destiny? And that becomes your pie in the sky. That becomes your ultimate meta goal. We've talked about the grand quest. That's your grand quest. The next step is to say, what is it I need to do to get there? You know, for me, I honestly, I'm someone who might have, I think I lost sight of my meta goal a long time ago. My grand quest, because I allowed myself to be led down a path that did not lead to what my grand quest was. Now I can always redirect and I can see where that is. But I need to recalibrate and decide whether that is still a grand quest that I want to achieve. For the time being, my current quest, and one that could lead to me achieving that grand quest, is to work in my 9 to 5, do the best that I can in that 9 to 5, and to produce these videos and grow my YouTube channel.
you know when i say we're on the road to 13 million subscribers i seriously mean i want 13 million subscribers i want 13 million actively engaged individuals subscribed to my channel i want so many subscribers i have to hire a team of people to respond to comments on my behalf Because that is a measurable goal I can achieve, and it will, in fact, bring me toward that old grand quest. It's a roundabout way of doing it, but it'll do it. And now I'm sure the burning question in your mind is, well, Julian, what was your grand quest? And I'm going to say this with absolutely no shame. I wanted to be an astronaut. Still do. Not for NASA. Not like I do I would not like I did when I was a kid. I would love to have a position with a private space corporation. Alternatively, I would not mind doing a short stint on the International Space Station. Whether for the for the purposes of doing a YouTube set of YouTube videos up there and talking about life in space. You know, how does this affect... How do you fit in things like Entropia Universe and day-to-day -day life in zero-G? How does your fucking mouse work? <laughs> but... To get there... There are a number of things I would need to be able to do. One of those things involves going back to school and becoming an engineer. Something I am actually pretty interested in doing. That takes money. Like everything in the world, like this game, it takes money. Everything you set out to accomplish will take money. And that's not a, um, that's not a bug of the way the world works. Because all money is is a measure. It's a medium. You know, it's, I had a, I had a, a saying, a turn of phrase that I used to use all the time. And this is back when I was like serious and cap. Obviously, I'm not that far anymore, but all money is is a measure of value. You know, you trade money for labor, you trade labor for money, and then money for goods and services. Well, one of those services is going to school. And so this, me providing you a service... And I'm not currently getting paid because I have not learned this trade well enough to have deserve, to earn the right to be paid for it. Do you see how that works? Eventually, when I have earned 1,000 subscribers, I'll have earned the ability to apply to be paid for providing this service. At which point the money will start to flow. Slowly. It'll be a trickle at first. But gradually gaining steam. Um, let's do this. Oh, did that come? That comes with health benefits? Oh yeah, 14 extra points, I'll be damned. Um, and then, as I build that audience, as I build those subscribers, that will translate to compensation. That is how you build value. That is how you earn your way to 
your grand quest. With this, there's a lot of labor that goes in before a penny is earned. And you can ask anyone. Ask any creator that isn't me. I mean, you can ask me too, but I haven't gotten there yet, right? I really haven't earned the right to answer the question of just how much effort goes into creating a channel that can be monetized. But there are plenty of other creators out there that can tell you. You know? And I would challenge you to go do so if this is the path that you... If this is a route you think will bring you toward your grand quest, whatever your grand quest might be, I would strongly recommend you go out there, you talk to creators. You know, talk to the stronger creators, because I am... I'll be the first to admit, I think I'm decent as a creator for the for the level at which I create. But there are creators out there that are far more professional, that are much higher level. And that's just a matter of time and honing the craft. If it's not this that you're aiming to do, find someone in the industry that you're looking for who is successful at it. And ask to talk to them. Uh, ask them questions. Don't don't go out there looking for a job. Don't go out there looking for, you know, a whole bunch of their time. But when when you go out there and you're like, okay, I really want to get into car sales. And you say, okay, what do I need to do to learn how to, how to get into car sales? Of course, you have to apply. You have to have some sort of experience most times. So you go and you find someone you know who's in car sales. And just ask them a couple questions. 2832, that is not bad. I don't know anyone from any industry... That wouldn't be willing to ask simple questions about what they do. And then as you learn about it, ask them more complex questions. A lot of them will appreciate it. Maybe the position you want requires some experience elsewhere in that company. Apply for a lower level job in the company that you want to work for. Show them you've got the ethics. Show them that you have the ability to provide the effort. And the opportunity will come. Or more importantly, you will be you will be given the the you will be given the opportunity to ask for the opportunity. That's all you need. The opportunity to ask for the opportunity. And this is true of this is true of a profession, it's true of hobbies. Hell, it's true in Entropia Universe. You know, it's not like I hide what my my avatar's name is. I've had players that have watched my videos ask me questions in game. I don't have a problem with it. You know, PM me. Now, I may not be able to answer right that moment. But it doesn't mean I won't answer. But I'm also not necessarily the... No, I can't even say that anymore. I've, I've come to the point where I can answer a lot of questions, depending on what the question's about. If you've got questions about crafting, I am the wrong person to talk to. If you got questions about mining, I can give you some pointers, but I'm not the guy. Serial Overdrive, for instance, would be a much better person to talk about to, my, to about mining. If you want to talk about melee hunting, shit, I pretty much turned it into an art form.
Oh, that reminds me, we got a reward. I learned that perception is really good to have. So that's what we're going to do. Although I guess in hindsight the damage would have been good too, because I really need to work on my damage professions. <laughs> Or what, three levels behind? Yeah. Oh, I hit level 39 and 36. So what's my nickname now? Professional Swordsman. Ah, oh, bro. No, not really. Game just seems to think I am. All of a sudden, I got, who am I to disagree? Good lord. So, I found this video on Facebook. And I think the reason that kind of struck through my head is because, um... The old, like, late 80s, early 90s pop song, um... Love is a Battlefield. Somebody translated it into, of all languages... They translated it into Klingon. It is glorious. Go looking for it. It is absolutely glorious. Oh. Simply amazing. We are coming down to eight hours remaining. Oh, wait, we were in the sixth hour, weren't we? We were only six and a half hours in, folks. I apologize. I totally screwed that up. I can't math tonight. So that means we are six hours and 57 minutes into this year's Halloween mayhem. You know, it goes to the 15th or the 14th. If I can kill off a full run, I might be tempted to, do, to try a second for a better score. I mean, we're really gaining steam on the mutant looter. We have animal looter in here to see. Now, let's, let's take a look at our professions here. And looter is resource collecting. So animal is 21 and mutant is 15. Now and robot is 9. That needs to that needs some help. But after listening to Lores, it occurs to me that apparently once you hit like level 100, which admittedly takes a really long time because it's supposed to, hunting becomes much much more efficient. And so I'm kind of making it a goal to work on that. Really, dude? I hate it when they get hung up on shit. It's like, dude, your your pinky toe is stuck on the statue, okay? I know you're clipping on wireframes and the the guys out the people out there that do Actual programming are gonna ratio me hard. I understand how it works. I've done level design before. Okay. Nothing a mat, you know, miraculous, but I have designed game levels in my free time. They were functional, they've been tested. So I get how clipping collision works. I also know what happens when you don't have proper collision and suddenly you're walking through trees. It's like, what the frick? Then you find out that the um, the graphic that was produced is produced in such a way that if you try to introduce collision to it, it just takes the whole block, including the air. And it's like, no, that's not how this is supposed to work. Ah, 
that, my friends, is how invisible walls are made. Twenty-four eighty-seven. I don't. How many did we have when we started? Less than that, but not by much. I'd like to see a few more points here, Mind Arc. Almost at two hundred ped. Yeah, we're gaining a touch. We got the three strong boxes, so that helps. I've been getting some globals when I'm not recording because, God forbid, I get globals when I do record. But, you know, maybe Ludius will smile upon me. I love how ridiculous some of these skill pills are. Like, I don't know why I don't utilize more of these things more often. This one I would probably save. I don't know what I'd use this for. I mean, run speed doesn't really do much for me. But it's probably because I'm more of a tanky character. So, like, if you're a... A rifle... If you're a rifleman... Oh, here we go. Here comes the lag. There we go. Whoa. Scope it. Why am I aiming at his junk? Look at how many freaking buffs I have. Oh my god. That's absurd. That's kind of funny. You can have that many buffs on at one time. See, that's how I could solo the uh, the war chief. Just like down every single freaking pill that I have. Down every pill and just be like, oh yeah. Be like taking Psycho and freaking Fallout. There we go. I could have probably hit him. We're a little over the halfway mark for the average spawn rate of Calrom. The cannibal. I'm given to understand, so for those of you playing the home game, I mentioned the vampire cloak. And someone commented, Daniel commented that um, the vampire cloak is given off by Cal Rom, the cannibal. And that got me to thinking, really? We're facing Cal Rom, the cannibal here. Now you have to farm him, and farming a, the boss mob is not easy because you only get him once on average every hour. Obviously, higher categories are going to have a much better chance of it dropping, assuming it's still on his loot table. So, honestly, I kind of want to make that my goal, is to have that drop off Cal Rom. That would make, like, my whole fucking year. Top to bottom, the whole year. 847, that's a little better. Yeah, 
can see that the uh, creature challenge is becoming more and more challenging. We still have the daily going because we're within the one year grace period. I was really impressed that it let me do it another time after the first time. Because all of the iron missions, you can't take the next iron mission. Which makes sense to a certain extent. Doesn't mean I don't want to be able to take the next iron mission, but you know, you don't want to. Mind Dark, I'm sure, did not want people to abuse the iron mission system. Because I know there are people out there planning to do so. Just one of those things, I suppose. Woot. I've reached level three in Prospector, oh my god. Wow, I got a lot of levels. Holy shit. And that was me buying keys for strong boxes. Come on, don't get hung up. You know, I have to admit, it's harder doing an hour-long piece of content. I don't know how, like, Lore Spade does a five-hour stream. I wish I had that level of skill. That's kind of like a goal, is to be able to come up with enough content for that level. I'm still working on an hour. Um, it, it takes a lot of work. A lot of hard work. It takes a certain level of talent, but... Really, there's no amount of talent that can't be beaten by hard work. Honest hard work. Not like, well, I, I, I did all this busy stuff and I, I was working really hard. It's like, no, you were doing busy work. That's not hard work, that's being lazy. Oh my god, I love how it's the hand grab um, pumpkin. It looks like Thing is coming out of a bucket of candy for those of you that are fans of the Adams family I'm sure you can appreciate what I'm saying because that hand looks much more like a zombie hand than anything else it doesn't look like a mechanical hand that's a zombie hand it's coming out of the food bucket that's a thing except it's quote-unquote not thing so they don't have to worry about copyright Oh yeah, it has this knife. I should probably go out and finish the um, berry clip grouping. I've been trying to decide how I'm going to do content now that I'm back on Calypso. Because I spent a hot minute on Next Island. Like, quite a bit of time. But... You know, it it didn't... As beautiful as Next Island was, I can see why it gained its reputation to be... Or why it has a reputation and why its theme was, you know, Tropical Paradise. It really felt like a vacation spot despite all the frickin' monkeys. 
screaming at you and trying to claw your eyes out. It's like, will someone get rid of these papoos? Um. But. The. Obviously, Calypso is the most populous planet. You're going to find more there. Cyrene has the advantage of an amazing loot table, relatively speaking, to other planets. There's no getting around it. That's just the way it is. And I was spending a lot of time on... Um, LAs on Calypso. Because the tax rate was more favorable than the rest of the planet. I mean, I know the theory is is that they tax land areas, but they don't tax. I don't care what they say. There's some sort of a tax on the rest of the planet. And I wouldn't doubt if it's like anywhere between 7 and 10%. I, I know that, and it's, it's it's actually right in the terms of in conditions that Mindark's money comes from the money you dump into the repair terminal. That money is pulled from the game. That's how they pay their developers. There has to be some other form of tax or method with, with which they get paid. I know it's not one-to-one. -one. It'll never be one-to-one. -one. It shouldn't be one-to-one -one because Mindark needs to be able to keep the servers running. It's just the way it is. You know, we have to pay so that Mindark can keep their servers running. There's nothing wrong with that. We don't pay a $15 a month. Now, if we paid a $15 a month subscription and then they tax us, that would be real shitty. But we don't. Statistically speaking, we don't at all. And I know that there's they have a um, they have an account for player debt, and they're collecting the dividends or the interest from that account. I don't know if it's held in bank or or brokerage or how it's being held. You know, if it's in, it's it's probably in investments. And if they're being smart, it's going to be held in bonds, um, investment grade bonds. And so they're collecting the interest off that. And I'm sure that that's part of it. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's the smart way to do it. That's why it takes them six months to get a, a withdrawal to the person who requests it. Because there's a whole ordeal in having to get that money out. Either they have to wait for the next interest payment or they have to sell some of the bonds. Hmm. Holy buckets. I didn't realize that this uh, ant made it quite that efficient. I mean, it's not a huge deal. How much more do we have? We have a hundred shots, give or take. We have 3,000 shots there, 3,400 shots there. I've learned that, roughly speaking, most weapons, it's one shot per pack if you use ammo. Or it's one pack per shot if you use ammo, it's three pack per shot if you don't, on weapon decay. Roughly speaking. See, now we're down to 82. Cal Rom should be popping here pretty quick. As you can see, it's not perfect. I do like how you can see four decimal places now, though. It's 
three. Yeah, we might be up to a thousand. How's this doing? Ooh. Oh, not that one. Okay, we're doing okay there. Oh god, there he is. Unequip. Detach. Attach. Attach. Okay, let's, uh... Get this into the spot. Hopefully I didn't screw up my video. Okay, no, because I fixed it. There we go. No. Let's fight. Come on, Calrom, let's do this. Come on. Oof. Yeah, we're, we lost some. We definitely lost some. But we need those skills. Come on. Ouch. We're not as efficient as I want to be. Because his health is moving a lot slower than last time. We're getting those skills. Come on. We got this. We got this. Did not expect to lose quite that much. A 40% loss is huge. That's going to that's going to eat up some seconds. Wow, look how slowly there we go. But still. I mean, you can see just how much it, it's eating through. Come on. We got it. Come on. We will kill the cannibal. Maybe we'll get a nice big uh, vampire cloak. Become a death knight. Forty-five minutes though, or forty-seven, forty-eight minutes? That's not bad. And Cal would drop a lot there we go. Hello. Okay. It doesn't show us our score anymore, so I can't even track that. I'm sure you could, you know, go back and pause it. So we are now into our eighth hour. And we will see you next time. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Please like, share, and subscribe down below. We are on the road to 13 million subscribers. One subscription at a time. So make sure you subscribe. Guys, I really appreciate all the support. I hope you're loving this mayhem content. You all have a wonderful, wonderful day.